Hi and welcome back to my channel. I don't want you to hold on to any beliefs. And what do I mean? Our beliefs change. Our emotions change. Our beliefs about our beliefs change. And I like to say this quite a lot. The person that you were five years ago thought that they knew about creation, about their spirituality, about their friends, about their relationship, about whatever, you know, and we change. We look at them now and we say, oh my God, look at how much I've matured. Look at how much I've changed. That idiot doesn't know squat. Now I know about my friends. I know about my love life. I know how to blah, 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 blah. And that's going to change in a year and two years anyway. So you have to start looking at yourself, not as a solid, but as a liquid or flowing type of energy that is meant to change, you know? Change is the construct inside our life. Now, what happens when you go beyond 30, beyond 40, beyond 50 years old? You start to become much more solidified in your opinions. You start staying at home much more. You stop allowing that change to occur in your life. Now, your brain changes all the time. Just like your body, you know, it doesn't age in the same way. As long as you practice it, it's just like a muscle. So you will always have that dynamic flow of ideas, creativity, if you allow it. The only thing is that we are surrounded by people that are much more constant and you can say within the box or limited type of thinking and we tend to start thinking like them. Now what happens when you hold on to your belief? You want to receive more information that concurs with that belief system. In other words, you reject any new information that does not concur. For example, a religious person. You talk to them about the option of not having an absolute truth or the option of perceiving God in a different manner. And they will go, ah, no, it's just Jesus. And, or, or if it's a rabbi, you know, no, there's heaven, there's hell and stuff like that. You see, you can see that and we're doing that as well. We're doing that with our own belief systems. For example, when we argue, then we are held... When we argue, we are holding on to our beliefs. We are, you know, strengthening ourselves. We are reinforcing those beliefs by giving us this and this amount of information. And anything that doesn't fit that belief system, we are pushing away as much as we can. So much so that we create an argument within ourselves and with other people as well. For example, if you're green, then you will usually be a vegetarian or a vegan. And then you have to reinforce that belief within yourself. So you look at other people and sometimes you judge them for still eating animals. You say you don't have compassion enough. What happens when we want to change that belief? First, we have to again see our belief as something that is more flexible. Okay, it's just a belief. It's just an emotion. It's just a thought. It is not mine. It is something that goes through me. And this is the way that Buddhist monks see it. This is why when we meditate, we do not uh, attach ourselves to a belief, to a thought, to anything like that. We just see it disappear because we know it's not us. We are the observer of these things. So in order to change a belief, we have to collect enough information to pass a certain threshold in order for that belief to break and we accept new beliefs. Now, you can go through the process over and over again, pass, you know, that threshold, or you can just reduce that threshold significantly by reducing your ego, by accepting criticism, accepting reality as it is without arguing about it, becoming observer of your belief system, trying to triangulate the location, origin location of where that belief came from and break it apart. And see when you are squeezing into that belief, you know, you will notice that your body is not expanding. Your body is going like this because you're holding on to something. And this is the opposite of love. Love wants to expand. Love wants to explain. Love wants to understand and understand that there is no absolute truth. There is all of us together and everyone has their own belief system. So when you are holding on to that belief, you become attached to it. And when you become attached to it, you become depressed. When you see that something doesn't correspond with your belief, when you wake up in the morning and say, but I'm green, I have everything that I want. I have the money, I have the relationship, I have the life, I have... I'm supposed to be happy. Why am I not happy? Why? Because you're not allowing that flexibility of life. You're not allowing the constant change you think that you know who you are you are much more than what you truly are you have to let go of the attachments you have to let go of the beliefs let go of the fears and it's much easier than what most of us make of it we think that it's hard and we're making it hard we're reinforcing the belief that it's actually hard and that's what makes it hard you know it's much easier if we actually do the work instead of focusing on what is limiting us from doing the work stop holding on to your beliefs 
investigate. The whole idea, the word awareness is be aware of who you are, who you truly are, who you're going to be, who you were, what has happened in your life in order to become the person that you are today. You know, what makes you happy? It always comes back to that. It's such a simple question. What did they take away from us when we were children that created adults that are miserable, that don't like, that suffer from, from their day-to-day -day life? What has happened to us? Let's go back. Let's see what beliefs have changed. Did we believe one day, you know, when we were young, that the world is a beautiful place and we can play with everybody and trust everybody? What happened <laughs> to that young, innocent child, you know? Think about that. Namaste, my friends.